Hey, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to strip things back a little bit and we're going to take a super deep dive into JavaScript. So we're going to look at how the code that you write in JavaScript turns into executable machine code that either runs on your browser or in Node.js in the back end. And in particular, we're going to focus on the V8 engine that powers both Node.js and, of course, Google Chrome or any other sort of Chromium based browser engine, whether it's Chrome itself or whether it's Brave or whether it's Edge. Now, of course, although we're going to look at the V8 engine specifics, what we're looking at will also apply to Firefox or uh, any other uh, JavaScript based engine. So why are we going to do this? Well, the first thing is I don't believe in magic, right? So, I mean, I love Harry Potter and stuff, but you know, I don't like this idea that I'm going to write some code and then magic stuff happens and I have no idea what's happening. If I want to be a great developer and I want to write amazing code, then I need to understand how the code that I've written turns into whatever is going to be executed on the machine side. And that's what we're going to focus in on today. And to be honest, it's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to understand some really key computing concepts, whether it's things like accumulators or register machines. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and let's get started. Alrighty, so the first thing we're going to do is create a super simple JavaScript function, and then we will see how that is executed throughout the V8 engine. All right, so let's uh, head across to my machine. The first thing I'm going to do is bring up VS Code for a second. Um, let's just expand out my screen and we'll add a new file. And I think we will call this example.js, nice and simple. So what we're gonna do is create ourselves a super simple function uh, and all it's gonna do is return the number five. So we'll call this function return five. Um, we're not gonna accept any parameters in for just now. Uh, so I'm gonna create some brackets and literally all I'm gonna do is return the number five from the function. That is it. And then all we will do is log it out to the console. So we'll call return five. And then just to make sure it works okay, we'll run across to my terminal. You see I've got example.js. I'm gonna run this in Node.js rather than browser, but the same applies in browser. And the reason I'm running it in Node.js is it's we're gonna have a look at some of the bytecode that's generated, et cetera. So it's gonna be a little bit easier uh, to do that with Node.js rather than mucking around with the browser. All right, so to execute that, I'm just gonna type node example.js. And of course it returns to number five. So that's now working. Alrighty, so let's switch across to my iPad for a second and we'll draw out the workflow that your source code is gonna follow through uh, to turn into machine code and be executing on your machine. So the first thing that we have here is a box that represents my uh, source code. So this, in this case, it would be example.js. And the first thing that needs to happen is the V8 engine needs to parse that source code. So there's gonna be a little parsing routine uh, we'll have a parser in the middle here, so it's called parser. And then what that's gonna output is a thing called an abstract syntax tree. So we are not gonna focus that in this video. Um, I just want you to be aware that what happens is it generates this thing called an AST. And think of it like a tree, right? So it's got lots of different nodes on that, and then it gives you a basic idea of what the execution flow is through your application. As I said, we're not gonna focus on that just now. So once that abstract syntax tree is created, that is gonna be fed into an interpreter. And what the interpreter is gonna do is take all of that abstract syntax tree that's been produced, and then it's gonna essentially turn it into a set of virtual bytecode, right? So it's a sort of virtualized machine code. So think of it like a kind of virtual machine. And in, and in particular, the V8 engine is called Ignition. Um, so we'll just write that there, Ignition. And that is actually what we're gonna focus in on today. So is we're gonna focus in on the Ignition engine and we're gonna, and the type of engine that it is, is it's essentially what is known as a register machine, and we'll explain that in a little bit later. But once that's created, it's got this sort of virtual bytecode that is abstracted away from any particular machine implementation. And then it will run through a couple of optimizers. Um, again, we're not gonna sort of focus on them today, um, but that machine code will get optimized a little bit. So things like uh, for caching or any any sort of speed ups that it can think of. And then eventually that's gonna run through 
uh, uh, a compiler, and then that compiler is going to turn that into uh, the machine-specific code. So if you've got an Intel machine, for example, it's going to create an instruction set that's suitable and optimized for the Intel machine. If you've got something like an ARM machine or you've got a Mac, uh, Apple Silicon M1, for example, it will generate an instruction set that is optimized for that. So it's going to create machine-specific instructions. So that sort of piece in the middle here, this uh, interpreter, has got this sort of machine abstracted code, which will eventually get turned into something specific for a machine. So that's the area we're gonna focus in on. And by understanding the uh, virtual code and understanding this register machine, then I think that's gonna help us become a better JavaScript developers because we will understand what's going on in the hood. So if we want, we can actually look at the bytecode that's produced by the VA engine via the magic of Node.js. And how we would do that is we would just type in Node, as we do normally, and then we would add in the flag dash dash print dash bytecode, and then we would just enter the name of our file. So in this case, it was example.js that we created, and we'll just run that. And you can see it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's created a lot of goop there, and it's really hard to read, but actually there is a kind of filtering option that, that we have. So if I just, uh, come over here and then if I just add in another filter so uh, dash dash print dash bytecode but this time I add filter dash filter and then I set the filter equal to the name of my function so I will call this return five and then if we re run that again then what's going to happen is it's only going to return the bytecode for the function that you specified. So if we take a look at my screen, we'll see what it's outputted there. So the first thing to kind of notice is it's got the name of my function, which is return five, and you know there's a pointer to that. Uh, it's got a count of parameters, we'll go into that later on. Uh, it's got a count of registers, we'll go into that a, a little bit later on as well. And then you can see a couple of instructions there. So you see this thing that says LDA SMI5, and then you see this thing that says return. So that LDA SMI5 and that return is actually the bytecode. And we're gonna just dig into a little bit and understand what that actually means. So if we just return to VS Code for a second, and if we remember the function, you can see that the function, all it's doing is doing this sort of return five. That is literally, that is all that is occurring in this function. So if I come back to the bytecode for a second, I can sort of get my return. It's doing a return there. That's kind of cool. You can guess what's happening. That's returning out the function. But what's this LDA SMI five? Well, it's you could probably guess that the load the LD stands for load, which it probably is. So load, and then you can see the number five. So what's this SMI? Well, in that case, it's small integer. So it's sort of saying load me a small integer of the number five. And then what it's what this A stands for is accumulator. So if I bring all of that together, what it's saying is load into the accumulator in the basically the number five. And of course this piece of uh, assembly is a sort of human readable form. And if I move across to the left a little bit here, you'll see this 0C05, so that's a little bit of hex. And 0C is essentially the instruction code, so that relates to this uh, LDA, this load into accumulator. And a 05 is the number that I put in. So if, if I was to come back to my code for a second of VS Code, and then rather than returning the number five, if I put in the number seven, um, and then I just run that piece of code again, you would see that that LDA SMI uh, now becomes seven. And you know I've still got OC, it's the same instruction code and hex that I had before, but now it's uh, the number seven is being pushed through as well, and it's hexadecimal. So again, I'm, I'm not gonna go into the details of hexadecimal for a second, but it, you could imagine that if I change that number to be the number 10 and then run it again, I would expect to see A, because A represents 10 in hexadecimal. So let's just run that, and you would see that. So zero C, which is a load, and then zero A, which is the number 10. And A is, of course, hexadecimal for 10. And then eventually it's going to do a return. So when I break it down there, that, that instruction code is, is, is pretty simple. But of course, it opens up this question of what is an accumulator? And we're going to deep dive into what an accumulator is in the next part of our video series, which will be appearing in the top right-hand corner of your screen. 
speak in the next video.